The Earlier Start and Finish Time, Chapter 10b. Earlier Starting Time. The earliest starting time is the min minimum amount of time it takes to complete all prerequisite activities. It is the length of the longest path from the start vertex of the chart to the start vertex of the activity. Edges that share the same start vertex also share the same earliest starting time. We use earliest starting times and latest starting times to help determine the critical path. Critical time. The critical time is the shortest amount of time required to complete all activities. The earliest starting time of the start vertex is always zero. That is the vertex at the beginning of the diagram. And the earliest starting time of the finish vertex is the time it takes to complete all activities in the project. This is called the critical time for the project. Earliest finishing time, otherwise known as EFT. The earliest finishing time is the minimum amount of time it takes to complete the activity plus all prerequisite activities. And it is calculated by adding the edge weight to the earliest starting time. So earliest finishing time equals weight of the edge plus the earliest starting time. Unlike the earliest starting time, the earliest finishing time is not shared by all activities with the same start vertex. Instead, it depends upon the weight of the individual activity. Hopefully all of this will make sense once we do some examples. Forward scan. So a forward scan is the procedure to determine the earliest starting time for each activity in an activity chart. Instead of looking at all possible paths, this algorithm begins at the start vertex and moves along the edges of the activity chart. It calculates the earliest starting time at each vertex as the maximum earliest finishing time of all activities that end at that vertex. So it takes into account how much time has to pass before you can start a certain activity. The minimum completion time of a project is the earliest starting time of the finished vertex. So let's have a look at an example. Calculate the earliest starting time for each activity in this activity chart. So looking at the activity chart in the top right hand corner, we can see that we have our start vertex and then we have activity one that goes for one minute and act, sorry, activity A, which goes for one minute and activity B that goes for three minutes into the second vertex. So activity A and B, the start vertex, has an earliest starting time of zero because every start vertex has an earliest starting time of zero. The second vertex, it will have an earliest starting time of three because you have to take the edge that has the highest weight. So given that activity three, sorry, activity B has a weight of three, then the second vertex will have an earliest starting time of three. Then we can commence activity C. So the earliest starting time for the finished vertex will be three plus the weight of C, which is two, so three plus two is five. So let's have a look at another example. Here we're going to perform a forward scan to determine the earliest starting time for each activity in the following activity chart. So if we have a look at the activity chart in the top right hand corner, you can see that it has been replicated further down and we have put in these six boxes two green boxes above each vertex. So step one when doing a forward scan is to draw a box split into two cells at each vertex. That is the green boxes that we have drawn. Write a zero in the left hand box at the start vertex because remember that a the start vertex, the earliest starting time of the start vertex is always zero. 
Okay, now we're going to have a look at the earliest start time of the middle vertex, the second vertex. Now we can see that activity A will take us, let's say, four minutes. Activity B will take us five minutes. And activity C will take us six minutes. So our earliest starting time for us to commence activity D, E and F is going to be when A, B and C have finished. Now you always take the longest time. So our earliest starting time for the second vertex is going to be 6. And then our earliest start time for our finish vertex will be 6 plus the weight of the largest edge which is going to be E. So our finishing, earliest finishing time for the finish vertex will be 14. Let's have a look at a final example. So determine the earliest starting time of these activities. So the earliest starting time of finished is the largest of the values and is the minimum completion time. If any vertices in the network have more than one activity leading into it, write the larger of the values as the earliest starting time of that activity. So let's have a look. At the starting vertex, our earliest starting time, as always with every starting vertex, is zero. Then if we have a look at the second vertex after we have completed activity A, we only have activity A. So that's the only one that has to be completed before we meet that vertex. And activity A goes for four minutes. So our earliest starting time for the second vertex will be four. Now if we have a look at activity B, which goes towards the top of the chart to that vertex, activity B is going to take us six minutes. So the earliest starting time that we can start that top vertex will be 4 plus 6, so it will be 10. And then if we have a look at the bottom vertex, so from activity C, okay, the earliest we can get to that bottom vertex and start activity E is going to be once we have completed C, which goes for 3 minutes, so that will be 4 plus 3. So that's going to be 7. Our earliest starting time from that vertex will be 7 minutes. And then our finish vertex will have an earliest starting time of the highest weight, okay, the largest of the values. Now, to the, we're not finished until activity D and activity E have been completed. Now, I can get activity E complete it with 7 plus 5, which will be 12 minutes, but activity D won't be finished because activity D is going to be 10 minutes plus it takes 7 minutes to complete activity D. So the earliest starting time for the finished vertex will be 17. It will be the largest of the values. Okay, now I want you to attempt some textbook questions. It would be great if you could also have a look at the booklet questions on this topic. If not, that's okay. We can have a look at those when I get back to school. Uh, just remember to keep up with your work and don't fall behind while I am away. And if you have any questions, please email me.